after 40 minutes on Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Apple Autoglass, Canada's local autoglass experts. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I need to get on camera. I can't sing this long. Happy birthday, dear Commissioner Bettman. Happy birthday to you. You're blushing. You well, don't want the makeup. Uh, because it brings the visual of Marilyn Monroe singing to President Kennedy. Or are but, you uh, sunburned? Uh, Be honest. I'm, I'm actually sunburned. <laughs> As I told you before we went on the air, my daughter graduated from college, and I spent four hours sitting in the sun without sunblock, which everybody's been yelling at me for. Well, hopefully you're dizzy and uh, all confused from all that hot sun. Congratulations, your daughter. What's she graduate? You. Uh, Cornell University. Oh, you're alma mater. So we've yes. had Ken Dryden, we've had you. So we're looking for two great interviews. Let's start with uh, Gary. In your State of the Union the other day, you said there are no owners giving back the keys. Correct. Notwithstanding, you did a great job with Florida when Alan Cohen may have thrown in his keys. No, 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 no. We switched general partners. He's still a partner in the club. He has equity? Yes. Oh, good. And with Orange I'm glad, Lewis, I'm glad we clarified and, that. And Len Berry? They sold. And they, they sold. actually got money back. What did they get? Uh, the word on the street is uh, Jeff Winnick with the assumed debt and the cash. It was anywhere between 80 and 120 million. Is that about right? Well, I think. Well, first of all, we don't generally publicize what franchises go for, uh, but this franchise, ultimately, when you add up everything, went for what we think franchises are worth, and it's been far more than was reported. It is? Oh, yes. Now, Oren and Len bought for what? Around $200 million? Somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah, so it's, is it close to that? I guess just because, you know, your partner, the players with all the escrow, they're worried about the franchise values and what they're getting and the money that they're well, spending. Well, franchise values has nothing to do with the escrow. Well, it does in a sense, because if you have a great franchise, uh, you're, you're right. Uh, well, thank yeah, you. You're, you're dev dead right on that. But if the business keeps building revenues and if you go into markets that are healthy Ron, and big... Ron, Ron go ahead. We're, we're, we're coming through a recession. I agree. We're, five years of record revenue. Use. This year, last year, we were up five percent in real dollars, putting aside uh, the difference between the Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar. This year, we're going to be up again. Some of it, the Canadian dollar, and some of it, real dollars. That will be five years in a row of record revenues. Not an issue. No. Well, except that. that they, and, and would you say the franchise values aren't as high as you'd like to have been coming out of the lockout? Everything seemed tickety boo, and they were skyrocketing. It looked like uh, t uh, Tampa went down. R reports of the demise, as the quote goes, have been greatly exaggerated. We're actually doing okay. Okay. How about Dallas? Tom Hicks. Have Tom you been funding the Dallas Stars? No. All right. What's he going to do? I hear Bill Gallagher of Calgary wants to buy them. How come he has? There, there are. Well, it's a process. You don't buy multi-hundred million dollar assets like you buy a lottery ticket. It requires due diligence. It requires doing a lot of homework. Ultimately, it requires negotiating a purchase and sale agreement. Uh, Tom Hicks has had some issues. Obviously, the Texas Rangers are being sold in baseball and actually they're in bankruptcy. Uh, the stars are not going into bankruptcy and we anticipate that they'll be sold over the summer. No, that's fair. But Tom's clearly turning back the keys, right? No, he's selling the club. He hasn't turned back the keys. All right. Well, what's the situation with, uh, with that gallery? Bid then. You say it's a, it's a long process. Sounds like to me it's been about a year and a quarter. Well, you know, you know when, when people do due diligence on a club and they're interested in buying, they typically sign non-disclosure agreements because when you go through the process, you don't do it out in the public eye. You do your homework and you're required to keep confidential the information that's going on. Why would I interfere with that process? All right. St. Louis Blues. What's going on with them? The hedge partner is uh, ready the, to sell a five-year exit plan? Well, you know, there are a lot of clubs that for example, you didn't mention Carolina, but I we'll will. do that. Yeah. No, no, I'll take care of that. <laughs> okay, good. Pete Carmanos had a partner. He, the partner didn't get a whole lot of attention. Uh, he was kind of behind the scenes, and he passed away a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Pete is looking to replace his partner. When you recapitalize, either in the case of St. Louis with either a lender or, or a minority partner who doesn't control the franchise, or in Peter's case, when you look for a new partner, that, that's not turning back the keys. That's not a crisis. What that is is doing a recapitalization. Businesses do that all the time. Just while you're on, uh, Peter Carmonis, the, the word I hear is he'd love $300 million, but Michael Zanian of Forbes said he'd be lucky to get 85 because hockey just won't work in Carolina. It's not hot enough. I, I, with all due respect to Forbes and Michael Ozanian, I think he's been off the mark. What, what I'm amazed now that we've run the gamut of this, uh, we've had a great season. 
The, I, hockey has been terrific. That's These fair. playoffs are great. We're watching <clears throat> a, a wonderful game, and you just want to tick off franchise after cran franchise? No. What, what inside of you compels you to want to go in that direction? Because I don't believe Gary, our viewers are really that interested in the franchise The players. Status. I'm doing it for the players. How's that? They're you, giving us the wonderful you know what? show. When, when, so when they're when, your partners, when, and we're in the Sun Belt, and we're not going into Southern what? Ontario. If that's the case, you do a disservice to the players and the great performances that are out there because if the players are interested the players can ask me well, we don't we don't have they're, they're spending 13 percent in escrow gary they're interested that has so, nothing to do with franchise values no i agree with that but the business they're interested in and the business is growing and yeah. the business has been growing okay just just so you want to we'll end it on that with the uh different franchises you didn't answer the st louis so what's happening with the blues they're, they're doing a recap okay and nashville too same thing they change general partners that's already been resolved but they have that loan coming up in december they have to uh, everybody has loans okay. coming up that's the way business the is Boots done del Biagio share in that in what in the in the nashville predators at 30 million will the trustee you think step in on that the trustee has possession of that okay uh phoenix any luck with the new owners there uh, we're now in a position where we know the club is staying there uh, and my ex expectation is the city of Glendale will do what it needs to do with who they would like to have as a new owner and then it'll go through our process. And they already have Glendale with the 25 million. By the way, if you're talking policy. about the players, I bet if you polled every player on the Phoenix Club, they would tell you that they are thrilled with the way we handled it because they didn't want to move. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I'd love Winnipeg, Good. Quebec to be in. I'd love Southern Ontario to be in. Okay. Uh, just back to the uh, Goldwater Institute. I don't know how much you can go into that, but are you at all concerned you've entered into the deal with the city of Glendale, a $25 million insurance policy that may end up in the courts if, Glen if Goldwater sues and you'd be uh, going with something that anybody means can, American law? Listen, I've been doing this long enough to know that anybody can sue for any reason. We believe that what we've done is absolutely appropriate and permissible. All right, that's good. Uh, why not Southern Ontario? You mentioned Winnipeg and Quebec Gary. Why do you keep uh, keeping well, Toronto out Well, there? first of all, if, if we have a franchise available by relocation, which is something we try to avoid, I'd like to try and fix a couple of things that we couldn't fix a number of years ago. And frankly, if a franchise becomes available, why not, if there's, if there, as there is in Winnipeg, a new building and prospective owners who'd mm -hmm. like to own the club, why not go back to where we were? And if Quebec City has people that want to own a franchise and there's a new building, why not go back back to where we were and take care of the issue. You, you obviously, and I hope our friends in Winnipeg and Quebec City aren't offended, you'd like to put them further down on the list. I'd like to write something that we wish didn't happen. I think the players might wonder why you don't go into Southern Ontario because it could be so profitable. That's again, just sort of a player's take on that. One other thing about way, Winnipeg. When who, who, are you, who are you getting your information from as to what the players are thinking? They don't have an Can't executive. Can't get it from their union head, that's right. right. So, so who are you, you're, well, you're, go, you you're making know? this up? No, no, yes. I go to Forbes, I go to the Sports Business Journal, Rick Burton and, 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 and that tells, and that no, tells you what the players are thinking? Rod Ford at Michigan, lots of, you know. You know, with, every, they, with, they everything, with everything that we've been through and with all of the union situation being uncertain as it is, I don't think it helps when you interject your view as to what the players it's want my view. on the players. Oh, it's well, little, that's fair. Okay, that's, that's fair, Gary. You're right on there. Uh, listen, on the Olympics, there's a report coming out in Sports Business Journal. I mentioned that may say they could profit as much as $100 million. How much do you think the NHL drove that profit? In the Olympics? Yeah. I think we were the biggest thing in Vancouver. You know that. You yeah. you were there. You witnessed it firsthand. How do you activate that? How do you uh, benefit from that? Well, there, there are pluses and minuses to being at the Olympics. Uh, we're, we're having a great season. I'm assuming some portion of it may have something to do with the Olympics. It's something that we're studying. Uh, there was some good to being at the Olympics, and there was some not so good, and that's what we're sorting out. Wish we had more time. I know that's uh, I, confrontational, but it's it's just good to, to hear you on those subjects. I, this wasn't confrontational Good. At all. Gary Babin, Commissioner of the National Hockey League. We're in a great game here. Let's check in with uh, Scott Oak and Kelly Rudy on the other side of the break on Hockey Night in Canada. Happy birthday.